Now we get to talk about my favorite feature of Google Classroom, the question tool. I'm now in the classwork page of my course, and um, after the update from 2018, all of the assignments have moved into this classwork uh, section. So that's important. It's a big change. Um, I'm going to click on the plus button in the bottom right corner and uh, go up to the question tool. And um, there are two ways you can use this. Uh, you can create a free response, a short answer question, and you can also create a multiple choice question. Now, the most common way that teacher you, teachers use this is for exit tickets, uh, bell ringers, warm up, do now uh, activities, that type of thing. So I'll do a quick example there. So you might just say, um, um, uh, share one important fact you learned in class today. Okay, so the question that I want students to answer is going to go up at the top. Now, if I wanted to um, elaborate a little bit more on what I'm expecting, I can put that in the instruction instructions. I can say, um, you know, please write in complete sentences. Please reference um, something we talked about today. Optional, but that's where you put that information. Now, any type of activity, whether it's an assignment or a question, um, allows you to select a due date. So I would uh, set this for, you know, the day, um, the class period. And then, you know, if, if class ends at uh, 245, I would put in 245 as a due date. It has to be done before you leave. Um, we'll talk about topics uh, later on, but uh, you can assign this to a topic if uh, you want to. Uh, most teachers will set those up by unit. And then the important part is down here in the corner, you're, this is where you're going to um, adjust from short answer uh, to multiple choice and back again. And some different options will appear depending on what you've selected. So this is a free response question, so we're going to leave it as short answer. But you need to give a little bit of thought into what you're going to do with these two um, options here. Uh, you have complete control over it. It is a little uh, misleading, though. So this first one, students can reply to each other. That also means that they will be able to see one another's post. So if you feel that um, one student's answer might influence another student, you can consider uh, disabling that. Now, Google Classroom is smart in that when you ask a question, students will not see the responses from their classmate until they have answered the question. Once they've answered, then all the responses uh, are revealed. So by using these two things in conjunction, you can get a more authentic uh, response from students. So if it's something where you don't want them to go back and modify their answer after they look at whatever else is said, you can leave the first one on. So leave this one on, but turn off students can edit answer. That way they can't go back and modify it if they're, you know, way out in left field and they just, they realize that after they've posted it. Um, typically for class discussion, um, for exit typically, tickets type stuff, um, you know, I might leave them both on or uh, just leave this first one on uh, depending on the, uh, the case, the situation. Um, like everything else in classroom, you're going to see those same four familiar icons. Um, you can attach a video, a document, a YouTube uh, link, uh, a link from a website, any attachment, um, and use that to reference um, the question as well. I'll give you an example of that here in a minute. So that's the basics for like an exit ticket. Um, I'd go ahead and post that by clicking the ask button and that's going to show up um, since I picked the homework topic, it's going to show up here in that homework uh, section um, listed. Now, I want to go ahead and um, make another observation here. That will also show up on the stream. So this is a little bit of a change. A very, very short summary of whatever assignment question you post shows up in the stream. And then by clicking on that, uh, the student would be taken to the actual question. That's where they would answer it. So for a lot of students, if they just go into Google Classroom, they're going to see that uh, first thing or then go to the classwork section and uh, find it right there. Either way. I'm going to give you a couple more um, ideas for using this in your class. I've got uh, a few written up. Um, math teachers, here is an example for you. It's really not 
um, reasonable to expect that students are going to be doing their daily math homework through Google Classroom. It's just at this time a little bit too difficult uh, to do that. And so I would encourage you to look at using Google Classroom to build the mathematical mindset in your students. And one uh, exciting way I've seen that done is by asking video story problems. So this is a real interesting one. Um, I've got a, a video here. This is a friend of mine um, wrote this, uh, created this video, and it talks about, you know, what's the better deal? Should I buy this giant yard of Twix from the candy store or should I buy 24 individual Twix bars? Which one is better? And students have to, you know, find the cost of them and do the calculations to figure out which one's a better deal. Now, the key to making that assignment work well in Google Classroom is you need a very open kind of ambiguous question that you could argue either way. So you'll notice that the, the response that I'm looking for, this is a, a free response question, and I'm not asking students to show their work. I'm just asking them to take a stance, which is better, the Yard of Twix or um, 24 Twix bars. Uh, so they're just going to post their answer, and, but they have to be ready to justify whatever answer they come to. Now, my hope is that half the class will pick one, half the class will pick the other, and then we can have a great conversation, a little debate over how they came to the conclusion that they did. That's where the learning is uh, really found. It's in the discussion, not in the actual typing of the answer here in Google Classroom. So this is, again, set to a short answer. And I want students to actually take a stance and so I'm not allowing them to edit their answer once they've selected a side. So that would be a fun way. Uh, there's lots of video story problems. I'll link to um, some of my favorites um, in the notes for this video. A couple other ideas um, for you to consider. Um, you know, the question tool is, is really good for just simple uh, things like, um, uh, let's do a poll question here. So I'm going to create a new question. And I'm going to say, um, how much of your research paper is complete? Okay, so this again will be asked maybe at the end of the class period. But this time I'm going to change it to a multiple choice option. And I'm going to say, um, you know, 25%, 50%, 75%, 80%. Or 100% finished. So this is just going to help me as a teacher kind of get a sense of where my students are at. If we need more time, we need to make adjustments or intervene uh, for some of the students. Now it's important to note that the question tool in Classroom really is not designed to be a quiz. You can only ask one multiple choice question. Um, to actually do a quiz, you'll want to use Google Forms. We'll get into that in, uh, in a later video. The nice thing about this type of question is that you're going to get some really nice data uh, to back that up. So uh, let me show you um, a different course that I have and uh, kind of how that data um, displays itself. So I'm going to go into this one here, and this has a poll question on it. Right here, I, I was doing some professional development for a school in Colorado, and I said, how are you using Google Classroom? Now, as the teacher, I'm going to get this data right here. It's going to show me exactly how many of each student have selected each of the choices that I've presented to them. And students can't do this, but I, as the teacher, can. If I press one of the options, it will actually display for me the students who made that choice. This can be very, very helpful when you're looking at project groupings um, and you're differentiating, differentiating your instruction. Um, sometimes what I'll do is I'll ask a super random question in my class, like what's your favorite flavor of ice cream or something like that. I'll give them five, six choices. And then I will use their responses uh, to create project groups for the day. So I might just pull this up on my, um, you know, my overhead projector, my screen. I might say, okay, you three guys, you guys are working together. Um, then I'm going to put you guys, you four um, are going to form a second group. So just a quick way to put them into project groups uh, for the day for an assignment. That's a quick overview of Classrooms, a great tool for collecting quick data that you can use to um, support your students more effectively.